The Neva River embankment in St. Petersburg was the prized real estate of Russian royalty. It was here that the Tsar resided in the Winter Palace, surrounded by the homes of other members of the imperial family. One such residence is the Grand Duke Vladimir's Palace. Completed in 1872, this was the last imperial palace to be built in St. Petersburg, and the perfect location to join my friend and owner of Russian Standard Vodka, Rustam Tariko, for a special dinner party. Oh wow, it's very beautiful. The ceiling frescoes on the magnificent grand staircase were brought to life by a troupe of performers. And drinks were waiting for us on the second floor. Thank you. We have to see out the window. This is a view across the Niva River, and we are so fortunate there is a beautiful sunset tonight. Couldn't be more perfect. Absolutely. And look at this balcony. It's the only balcony in St. Petersburg looking Niva River. Really? Imagine that. To tell us more about this beautiful palace, we were met by our guide, Nadia Guseva. We are in this raspberry living room that was decorated in the Italian Renaissance style. And if you look in between the windows, you can see Grand Duke Vladimir himself. Grand Duke Vladimir was born into the Romanov dynasty in 1847, the third son of Tsar Alexander II. He moved into this palace on his wedding day in 1874 and lived there until his death in 1909. For more than 30 years, Grand Duke Vladimir was the president of the Academy of Arts. And so the paintings that you can see here are from his collection. All of the furnishings in the palace are perfectly preserved, despite the fact that the palace was converted into the House of Scientists, a club for Soviet intelligentsia, after the 1917 revolution. Every room in the palace was decorated in a different style, making it a great monument reflecting the 19th century passion for historicism. Now what is this room called? So this is the Golden Living Room. And originally there were the salons of Maria Pavlovna. And she was the wife of uh, Grand Duke Vladimir. Oh my gosh. So now we're in the Moros <laughs> Moris Boudoir. Look what we see here. Beautiful, beautiful painting and paisley and gold. So it reminds us of some eastern country. Mm -hmm. And it was made in the imitation of Alhambra Palace. And here you can see the small secret door. This was the door to the study of the Grand Duke Vladimir. So Maria Pavlovna could disappear secretly through this door to Grand Duke Vladimir. To visit him. The Grand Duke and Duchess threw prestigious parties in their ballroom, inviting the most influential people of the time. Oh, what a lavish room. So yes, it is. And it was decorated in the so-called neo-rococo style. And so gorgeous balls were held here. The details in the ballroom were exquisite. But I couldn't wait to see the Grand Duke's library. This library was made by a very famous architect, Miss Maher, who created the style that reminds us of the medieval England. Originally, there were about 10,000 books here, and so Grand Duke Vladimir, who was a very brilliantly educated person, liked to sit here in silence and have some time for reading. <laughs> Lucky man. The Oak Room was the final room on our tour. It was decorated in the neo-Russian style with paintings of Russian fairy tale heroes adorning the walls. At the beginning it was a large banqueting room, but it was also constructed in this style to match the musical performances. Now, um, who played here? So different famous musicians like Fyodor Shalapin and Sergei Rachmaninov. I wish we could hear Rachmaninov tonight. <laughs> I wish also. <laughs> Can you make that happen? Uh, yeah, we'll try to. <laughs> Though Rachmaninov didn't show, traditional Russian entertainment was waiting for us in the dining room. And as fireworks burst over the Neva River, the night came to life with entertainers and a delicious Russian feast. Look at this perfect caviar. Oh, very beautiful. 